What's up, comic and pop culture fans? This is James with Mint Hunter Comics, and I gotta talk about something pretty important and something that, if you're a seller in the comic book market, please take note of what I'm about to say. Before I get into that, I gotta give you guys a little context. Essentially, I just got back home. I actually took a PTO day today, and I drove four hours and some change down into Virginia um, because I had a pre-agreed upon couple sales going on with a, a collector, fan of the channel actually, that reached out to me and wanted to sell me his collection. And I'm just going to let you know right now, I walked away empty-handed, which was a pretty big shock after driving over four hours down. Yeah, as you can see, I have nothing to show you guys today. I'm still a little angry. So basically what happened was I've been in talks with this dude back for like the past like four months or so. Actually, like before my channel even had a thousand subscribers. He's got a lot of good stuff. He's got the complete Wolverine first limited series run. He had a lot of great Punisher stuff. Obviously not ASM 129 or anything like that, but a lot of really great Marvel books. But he did also have a lot of really good Batmans. Um, he had some nice 300 level Batmans, like some really good bronze and even like late Silver Age Batmans. Just just some good books, D books I would definitely be interested in any day of the week. Um, but money has been really tight lately, and money is actually still tight. But luckily, we had a pre-agreed upon price, which is why I finally said, all right, let's do it. I'm coming down, you know have some coffee or something ready for me, you know, let's get into it. I'm excited. And I even brought a couple books that I thought he would be interested in trading. So I got down there and uh, he greeted me and I did the whole like, hey, do you mind if I record that sort of thing? He's like, oh yeah, no problem, man. Everything seemed completely normal, just like all the other collections I've bought, that sort of thing. Um, but something felt a little weird pretty much right from the start. He seemed a little on edge, something like that. And it was like, I don't know, maybe, maybe it's just kind of an introverted dude, you know, whatever. One of the first questions I asked was, and you're good to be paid via check, right? He said, yeah, yeah, that's fine. I do want to let you know, you know, me and my wife looked up some prices and some of the books we're not going to be offering at the same price. I got to go a little higher. Immediately I'm thinking, okay, don't, Think the worst, whatever. Maybe he's talking about going up a couple bucks. What are we talking here? Because remember, we started talking like four months ago. So I guess some of these books like blew up, especially, you know what the market's been doing these past couple months. It's been crazy. Well, some of these books went up pretty significantly. So he wanted to go up on his price on a couple things. And I was like, all right, whatever. You know, that kind of sucks. I'm really limited on money. So I really can only spend a certain amount of money, maybe I'm not going to be able to get his whole collection or everything I thought. That kind of sucks, but oh well, whatever. I spend like an hour there. Um, I got the books that I wanted to get the whole time. He's like, oh, like I can do that. And it's like, you can do that. That's not the price we talked about, dude. We said 300 for this set. And now you're saying 500. And then this other set, we said $80 on that set. Now you're saying 200. But nonetheless, I thought I'd do some final negotiations. I got everything put together in a short box. Initially, I was going to be getting a long box. I put everything that we talked about into a short box, and he starts getting out a big clipboard thing, starts writing down the prices for everything. And the short box, which was less than what I was going to get when we initially talked about the long box, ended up being more expensive than what we initially agreed to, which was everything. This was only 50% and costing more. So I was like, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. I came down here because you gave me these prices. Like, and I was like showing him my phone. Like, look at, like, here's what we agreed upon. And his wife stepped in and starts talking about how, well, we need to do what's best for us. You know, we've got a mortgage to pay. You know, we've got all this stuff. And I did some looking online and I found that these books are worth more. By the way, some of the books that he raised the prices on, he raised it to astronomical levels much higher than what a slabbed 9.8 is even asking for these books. That's how bad we're talking here. So this guy gets really shy. His wife starts to be the real voice of the conversation, and it starts to dawn on me like, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to buy any of these freaking books, man. Or like maybe I'll be able to get like a small piece. But by that point, the best deal I was getting seemed to be meh. And I was just I was just pissed off at that point. And I just told the guy like, look, man, this kind of sucks. You know, you know that I'm not local. You know that I drove over four hours to check out your collection because you gave me a price. This is like bait and switch. Um, and the moment I said bait and switch, him and his wife started kind of freaking out at me. Um, I think they thought that I was talking like legal crap. I don't know. His wife chimes in. We have the right to change the price. You guys didn't agree on anything. And I was like, we didn't agree on anything. We, yeah, we did. Yeah, we did. Because here's the deal, guys. I'm not going to drive four hours to buy something that I could have bought online in my underwear eating cheese for less? Are you out of your mind? So at that point, it actually just became the principle of the matter. And I was just like, look, dude, keep your books. Treasure them. You know, I hope they collect value. I hope you stay happy. I need you to know I'm pretty ticked off. But, you know, what, what can you do? You know, I understand your situation. You know, whatever. Just use this as a learning experience. And as I was walking out the door, I made a joke like, can you give me some gas money at least? And they just like did like a little dry little laugh. And I said, all right, I'm out of here. So now it's one o'clock. I wasted a PTO day. And at this point, I'm just so pissed off. But I was like, all right, I got to make the best out of it. I looked up a comic book shop. It was like 22 minutes away. Took a drive, went out there. And um, I was like, all right, I'm getting some comics out of today. And it was one of those like warehouse type deals. So it was kind of like, a, you know, pick through the box and then, you know, hopefully you find something good. And I started digging through there, just looking for some little off books. Uh, they didn't really have anything. Um, but I did find a Green Lantern Corps number eight, which is the first cameo of Kyle Rayner, which predates Green Lantern 48, which is the first full appearance of Kyle Rayner. Kyle Rayner, Green Lantern, got 20 other books, no keys or anything, just, you know, almost reading material, brought it up to the counter and the guy's flipping through and he's like, all right, one dollar, one dollar, one dollar. It was all dollar bin stuff. Um, and he gets to Green Lantern Core 8 and he looks at the book, looks at me, looks down at the book, looks at me and says, are you the guy who made a video talking about this book? And I was like, yes, I am. And we had like a nice little conversation talking about the book and how everybody's sleeping on it. And nobody really knows about it. And he, it's a nice conversation until he says, all right, man, I know this is in the dollar books, but I got it. I got to raise the price here. Let me get this straight. You have a dollar bin book and you're going to charge me more because of a video I made talking about the coolness of that book. Dude, if you have a cool book in your dollar bins, that's on you to get that out of there and get that priced. Don't put that on the customer, me. What the heck? So I was like, all right, because, you know, in my brain, like, I'll, I'll pay up to $5 for this thing. You know what this dude tells me? I can do 50 Get the f*** out of here. Oh, you can do 50 Oh, that's great. And I was like, dude, come on, man. It was in your dollar bin. And you wouldn't have known about it if I didn't make the video. The guy's like, oh, well, you know, like, you got to make business. And sometimes books get hot. So I was like, all right, all right, all right. And I got my other silly little dollar reading material books. And I left. Now, that is twice in one day that either a business or some guy in this collection completely flipped prices on me. I was so mad that I ended up buying cigarettes on the way home. I don't even smoke, by the way. I had to call my girlfriend for her to calm me down. I was so in just bad shape. And look, sometimes you can't make a deal. But if it's in a dollar bin or if there's an agreed upon price, isn't it enough to expect your agreed upon price and a dollar? So this brings me to what I wanted to talk about today. If you're running a business or if you're running a hobby, the prices you give need to be what you stick to. It's okay to not want to let something go, 
if you don't want to let it go, don't sell it. It's that easy. You don't want to let it go, just keep it. Don't even show it to me. But even more egregious than the dude who gives just his collection is this comic book shop. You have a dollar bin. And yeah, like if I find a Hulk 181, I'll pay more. But if it's like some silly little book that no one really even knew about, come on. If you're running a business, you should know your books and know your business well enough to be able to get into your dollar bins and price everything accordingly. If, throughout the course of your work week, if you find books that you think will be valued more, get in there, put a new sticker on there, set a higher price. Don't have dudes driving over four hours pop in your store, spend a few hours searching through long boxes, and then tell them, you know what, that two cent book, I'm gonna charge you 50 bucks for it. Just don't. That, my friend, is bad business. And I just realized that this wasn't recording, so, man, I, I am just having a day. My point is, I've been to comic book shops that where if you find something in a dollar bin or a two dollar bin and it's worth a little more, they just give it to you for the dollar or the two dollars because that's good business. They're making a good deal with a customer. They're setting the stage for future business. If you jack up the price at the counter, looking it up on eBay, what kind of precedent does that set? What does that say to your customers? This doesn't happen very often, but when it does, it just really gets to me, guys. Don't let me drive one hour, two hours, four hours, six hours out to some comic book store or someone's personal collection to give me the price of the recent sales on eBay. How does that make any financial sense for me? Don't wait for someone who's interested to come into your home knowing I've got an interested buyer. Let's get them. Have a deal with this person prior to coming out there. Establish your goals up front. Do not sway. If for whatever reason you have to say, you know what, I can't sell that book, that's okay. One or two books, you can't sell it that we originally agreed upon, that's fine. But to just jack up your prices while I'm there, I'm pissed off. I was really hoping this was going to be my next big look at the collection I found here video. And unfortunately, it's look at the gas money I wasted and the mental damage I've done to my brain. I was hoping to give you a better video than this, but hopefully there's a lesson here. Stay humble, my friends. This is supposed to be an enjoyable hobby. You know, we're supposed to be the greatest collector's community that's out there, the greatest comic book family there is, but let's just keep some important rules intact here, and let's try not to screw each other over. So guys, hopefully you learned a little bit of comic etiquette when buying collections or single books, and um, let me know if you guys got any cool collections, and let's agree to a price before I come out there. I love you all. Well, 99.9% .9 of you. I uh, hope you're having a better day than I did and keep on collecting.